This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. Recently, I flew into Boston from San Francisco, rented a car, and was hurrying to Cambridge to broadcast on the Harvard campus. But somehow, as I drove through the streets of Boston, I became disoriented, turned around, and decided to pull into a filling station and ask directions. The attendant walked over to my car, and I said, how do I get to Harvard? He paused for a moment and then replied, study hard in high school. This actually happened. It's a mutation of an old vaudeville joke which portrayed a little boy walking along the streets of New York City, coming up to an old man. The boy asks, how do I get to Carnegie Hall? The old man says, practice boy. But the point of both stories is similar. They portray a fundamental truth of human existence. Genuine accomplishment requires intelligent effort. The way to get to Harvard is to study in high school. And the way to get to Carnegie Hall is to practice. And the way to live a fulfilling and satisfying life is to work at it. Give it all you've got. Work hard, play hard, and enter into all the rich and good experiences of human existence as a beggar before a feast. Because God has spread his table of creation before you. And as a child of God, to taste of it and delight in it is joy. A joy which is rightfully yours for the taking and the having. During a heavy rainstorm in New York City once, I was walking along Broadway when I saw a man struggling down the sidewalk using a walking cane in one hand and holding his umbrella in his other hand. When he arrived at his bus stop, he needed to get some change out of his pocket, so he hung the hook of his walking cane in the crook of his umbrella, thus freeing his hand to search for coins. And as I passed this man, I saw he was softly whistling to himself as he waited. And I thought to myself, here's a man who needs a cane in one hand to keep from falling down and an umbrella in the other hand to keep from being rained on, and he's whistling. And then I thought of all the other people I had seen that day who, judging from their expressions, looked as if they had just brushed their teeth with anchovy paste. Certainly, life has its difficulties and its problems and its pains. Certainly, existence is a demanding task. But however difficult and demanding it may be, it is my profound and uttermost conviction that human beings were created and intended by God to live in victory of spirit, in cheerfulness, in love and joy, in the quest for goodness and truth and beauty, a quest which makes all things new, and a quest which ultimately conquers all obstacles. God created human beings to live active and dynamic lives. Don't expect God to do everything for you. And don't expect other people to do everything for you either. Next time you think you need a helping hand, try using the one at the end of your arm. Authentic faith is a tremendous source of power in human life. One time after I gave a speech in Butte, Montana, the copper mining capital of the United States, I was sitting afterward in the hotel dining room having a cup of coffee at the counter when a big burly mining engineer struck up a conversation with me. He asked a few questions about the speech I'd given. Then he said with a grin, now that I know something about your philosophy of life, maybe you'd like to hear something about mine. I said that I would. He was a healthy, hearty outdoorsman, a professional mining geologist. He'd spent his entire life in the rugged terrain of the Montana mountains. So I said, what is your philosophy of life? And he said, I can tell it to you in one sentence. Every day is a holiday and every meal a feast. He said, each morning when I get up, I remind myself to enjoy life to its fullest. He said, no matter how much work I may have to do, no matter how many responsibilities or obligations to fulfill in any given day, I simply make up my mind to enjoy that day, to enjoy it all. He said, I've found that if you get up in the morning in the same frame of mind that you would get up if you were going on vacation that day, and if you go through your work and your activities with a sense of fun in your mind... And if you decide to enjoy the people and the experiences and the work and the decisions and the challenges and surprises of that day with gusto, then you discover the truth of it. Every day is a holiday and every meal is a feast. And as I left, I thought to myself, there is a good deal of truth to that. You think about it for a moment. When you go on a vacation, you engage in all manner of vigorous, strenuous activity, swimming, long hours of driving, water skiing, mountain climbing, golf, tennis, late hours... And all of that requires a great deal of energy, probably more energy than you would spend during a normal day at work. But since you have redefined that work as play, you don't so much think of it as work as you think of it as fun. People spend so much time rushing through life and worrying about life and fighting anxiety about life 
that they don't take the time to delight in life and enjoy the work and the experiences of existence. If you have to go somewhere, enjoy it. When you have work to do, enjoy it. If you have a meal to eat, don't gulp it down without tasting it. Don't swallow it mechanically and zestlessly. Enjoy it. You are entirely entitled to delight in your human existence. You are a son or daughter of God. You are infinitely loved by God. And God created existence to be good. And as you live the days of your years, you are entirely entitled to enjoy your life. Loving God and loving people constitutes the supreme joy of life. The very fact that you're alive itself should be a source of daily gratitude and joy. Every 24 hours you live on this earth is another good gift of a good God. Your physical nourishment, your friends, your work, your hobbies, family, all these are part of the bountiful banquet of living. And no matter how much work or responsibility you have to carry out on any given day, remember that existence itself is a great and good gift that you are entirely entitled to enjoy it, and that for a person thus living spiritually exuberantly every day is a holiday and every meal a feast. Strong religious belief, regular prayer, a worship life, these literally create a longer and happier life, according to many health experts. Dr. Edward Robinson of Oxford, England says, prayer and a religious attitude toward life can strengthen the whole physical system. Dr. James Kilgore writes, a belief in God makes you a happier person because you believe you're going to experience immortality. Being happier will reduce stress, and that alone will make most people healthier physically. He went on to say, most of the people that I know who have lived long lives have been people of religious faith. Dr. Kurt G. Batiste, a California psychiatrist, wrote, those who believe in a positive God and prayer are happier and healthier people and therefore ought to live longer. He writes, as a psychiatrist, I would say that a belief in a superior benevolent source, such as God, who helps you in troubled times, reduces your stress and anxiety, and reducing stress has an effect on the physiological system. Believing there is a father up there reduces stress and saves wear and tear on the heart. Dr. Batiste went on to say, I don't believe in God myself, but I do believe it is easier for those who do believe in God to get through difficult times than for those who do not believe in God, end of quote. Scientists, medical doctors, psychiatrists are increasingly coming to an agreement that for whatever reason or reasons, the facts indicate that human beings who live in spiritual faith are very simply healthier and experience a greater sense of physical and psychological well-being. It is to their credit that even scientists who are not believers are acknowledging the fact that religion is a demonstrably potent force for good in the human system and experience of body, mind, and spirit. Faith is a dynamic source of energy. Frederick Hogue has written, Every man is his own ancestor, and every man his own heir. He devises his own future, and he inherits his own past. You are this moment creating your future. Think about that for a moment. Think on the truth that you are creating your future. One reason a great many people never get to the top is because they are not willing to start from the bottom. Fulton Sheen has said civilization is in danger when those who have never learned to obey are given the right to command. The progress and evolution of your life are slow processes, but there is a sublime purpose before you. Be you therefore perfect, declared the Master, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. Human life was created to be joyful. A person might declare on the average his life was fairly happy, considering that his number of emotionally high and emotionally low days, if averaged out, would come to a stabilized balance, which brings to mind the statistician who put his head in a hot oven and stood in a bucket of ice water and then declared on the average, I feel fine. The optimum fulfillment of human life is not just to have approximately enough good days to counterbalance your bad days so that on the average life is middling to mediocre. The fulfillment of human life lies in the exuberant discovery that in living by the good will of the good God of this good universe, your very life itself and all the days which compose it can be good. Ever wonder what it would be like to go through the day saying good morning, good afternoon, good evening and meaning it? 
that is how everybody really wants to live. Every day everybody says that to everybody else. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. But how many people have you known or heard about who actually went through their lives having good mornings, good afternoons, and good evenings? I am utterly convinced this is how God created and intended life to be good. I didn't say God created life to be easy or dull or boring or insipid or without challenge. There will be problems. There will be pain. But life on the whole is good. God is the ultimate source of all good. And the closer you live to God, the more good your day will be. I refer not to an easy day or unchallenging or selfish or lazy or lifeless day or an indolent day, but a good day. This is the delight of existence. One morning in wintertime back in Kansas, it was a gloomy, cold day, drizzling, icy snow. A little girl at the country farmhouse was saying the blessing at the breakfast table. The family bowed their heads. The girl said, we thank you, God, for this beautiful day. Her older brother looked out the window at the chilling drizzle of rain and snow, the dark sky, gray clouds. And he said, how can you thank God for a beautiful day on a day like this? And the little girl replied, never judge a day by its weather. Wherever you live, whatever you do, whatever the weather is like outside, whatever the physical health and education or social standing or power or prestige or wealth you possess or do not possess, never judge your day by these things. God has a will for you, which is the highest good you can enjoy. And if you seek for that, you will find it. As the Master declared, knock at the door will be opened. Ask, and you will receive. Human beings were created for purposes higher than mere physical existence. You are more than an ingenious assemblage of portable plumbing. You are a son or daughter of the living God. You were created for a noble purpose. Sigmund Freud, the famous psychiatrist, regarded the necessities of human life to be Leben and Arbeiten, to love and to work in that order. To live a truly fulfilled existence, you must live a life filled with love and filled with work, a high feeling of purpose. Such is the nature of an authentically good life. God loves you and God gives you love to give. And God has a work for your life and to pray, to know and do the will of God is to pray for all of that and more, and that prayer will be answered. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, declared the Master, and all these other things will be added to you. If you're interested in these topics, write to us. We want to hear from you at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviated SRI. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address, SRI, Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Seven Principles of Prayer, Life After Death, What Does Happen When You Die? If you're interested in these topics, no cost, no charge, no obligation. Nobody's going to come to your door with an attache case and try to sell you something. Simply write to the Spiritual Renaissance Institute Box, 3080 Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.